Central Valley of California is a flat, elongated stretch of land about 450 miles long that runs from northeast to southeast down the center of the state. Often called the breadbasket of the world, it's thought to be mostly farms and agriculture, but there are many towns and cities here that are home to nearly 7 million people. Not a lot of money in these parts. Drug use is rampant and the homicide rate is off the charts. Here are some of their stories. This is Murder in the Central Valley. This week's episode, The Hunt for a Serial Killer. Our story starts outside of the Central Valley in Oakland, California. It's April 10, 2021 at about 4.20 in the morning. The Oakland Police Command Center receives an alert on their shot spotter system. A device used to pinpoint where gunshots are coming from. It said there were shots fired in the 5800 block of Harmon Avenue. When police arrived they found a man down bleeding next to a bike. Medics were dispatched code 3. When they arrived they provided medical treatment. But it was too late. 40-year-old Juan Vasquez Serrano of Oakland was dead. Juan was a car mechanic for hire. He was homeless and out on his bike on that fateful morning. Some of the people that hired him to fix their cars would, sometimes let him sleep in their cars. Little did anyone know at the time that this was just the beginning of something that would continue 70 miles to the east in Stockton. On April 16, 2021, 46-year-old Natasha Latour was homeless living in a tent near some train tracks at Park and Union Streets in downtown Stockton. About 3.20 in the morning she heard someone walking around outside. She went to investigate and encountered someone holding a gun. The suspect opened fire. She charged her attacker. The shooter lowered the gun and left without saying a word. She survived the attack but was shot about nine times. Then for some reason there seems to be no other incidents for about 448 days. Then, July 8, 2022, at about 12.30 in the morning, a homeless man, 35-year-old Paul Ya, was on the ground at Holiday Park on Kermit Lane in North Stockton. The person who called 911 thought Paul had been shot with a BB gun. When cops arrived, they found Paul down near the basketball courts. He was alert and conscious and having difficulty breathing. The following is a portion of radio traffic taken the night of the murder. Adria Farm 5C, possible 911 Lake View East at Holiday Park, 5699 Kermit. RV sitting subject was 911 and Sheriff was by a 957 or a BB gun. Be near the basketball courts. We'll be code 3 from West Lane in Hammertown. We're out to the Farm 5C on Holiday Park. The gun supposed to be a white male, black shirt, tacky shorts. So alert and conscious. Reading that he's having difficulty breathing. The RP can't see any blood. We're clear for medics. We have one GSW to the chest. Yeah, the north of the park, uh, courts. Perfect. Uh-huh. also the GSW to the next. Now wearing all black. Uh, last thing going south out of the park. I know from there. He was taken to the hospital where he died. Paul's estranged mother in Texas, Greta Bogro, wrote an emotional message on Facebook that said, Quote, this was my son Paul. He was a sweet boy who grew into a man with a big heart. He was a son, grandson, brother, cousin, nephew, and his biggest accomplishment was being a father to William. His life was taken from him on July 8th. I was hesitant to put this out there, but I want to find the person responsible and hold them accountable. End quote. Then, 34 days later... On August 11th, at 9.50 in the evening, reports of shots fired, one man down in a Popeye's chicken parking lot on West Lane. A vehicle speeds away. Police arrive. We are uh, performing CPR. But it was too late. 43-year-old Salvador de Buddy Jr. was dead. No motive or suspect information. The buddy, known as Sal by friends, had been homeless for years. He was in the area and decided to go get a bite to eat when he was ambushed. Sal, husband, father, musician, was buried in his Raiders jersey.
Then on August 30th, about 6.40 in the morning. Yeah, GSW to the chest. And it's going to be a GSW to the head. A report of a person shot in a car at an apartment parking lot on East Hammer Lane. It was the killer's youngest victim yet. 21-year-old Jonathan Hernandez Rodriguez. Friends called him Johnny. Family on scene were devastated. This apartment complex is fenced off so the killer being in the parking lot may be a clue. How did he get in? Does he live there or know someone that does? Johnny was cremated and his ashes sit in his parents' living room while they decide if they are going to move out of Stockton. Then, September 21st at around 4.30 a.m., Six shots heard and a car alarm goes off alerting neighbors in the 4400 block of Manchester Drive in central Stockton. When police go to investigate, they find 52-year-old Juan Cruz down on the sidewalk, shot and bleeding heavily. Medics arrive and perform CPR. But despite their efforts, Juan was pronounced dead at the scene. September 27th at about 1.50 in the morning. 54-year-old Lawrence Lopez Sr. was on his bike on Porter Avenue. Neighbors heard the shots and ran out to find Lopez dead on the sidewalk. So 9-11, RPC the mail lane on the sidewalk in front of the call location near the trash can. Police arrived and started a crime scene log. Lawrence, musician and father of six, was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Stockton police were noticing a pattern. At this point they didn't know about the Oakland murder and hadn't connected the shooting of Natasha Latour to the others. So on September 30th Stockton police chief Joe McFadden called a press conference. With all media present, he ran down a list of five homicides that have very similar circumstances. McFadden also released a grainy photograph of a dark silhouette taken from a security camera. The killer meticulously avoided cameras. The problem we have, if we have no evidence to tell us that it's one person, two or three, we just don't know that. We don't have that information. We have no video footage that has even captured a crime, that has even captured a handgun in someone's hand. All but one of the victims were homeless people. The suspect could have easily taken vehicles, taken money, credit cards, but none of that stuff has been taken. It seems that this person or persons is very focused on the killing, and very calm and confident afterwards. All of the victims were alone and the killings happened at night or in the early morning. The victims are being caught by surprise. A week later, ballistics connected the Oakland murder of Juan Vasquez Serrano and shooting of La Tour. And they also released this video that the still was taken off. McFadden pointed out that this person of interest's race is unknown and walks with a slight gait, wearing a dark hoodie and a black COVID-style mask. At this point, police don't know if there's one or more suspects. They're telling people to be aware of their surroundings. Police have formed a special task force to look for this suspect. Or suspects. This is not Stockton's first serial killer. In 1997, Lewis Peoples went on a two-month killing spree and was arrested and died in prison. But back to the current killer. A reward is being offered of upwards of $125,000. That's this week's edition of Murder in the Central Valley. Please like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.